Good morning. Sterling Chew here, Second Growth Homes. Today we're going to go ahead and clean out the carburetor on the Volkswagen engine on my Mobile Dimension Model 127. I rebuilt this carburetor probably about 10 years ago. I haven't had to clean it since. It's given really good service. So the mill's been running a little rough. Uh, I keep checking things and cleaning stuff, and I haven't got it fixed yet. So I think the way it's acting, it's most likely that the carburetor is not running quite perfectly. So first thing we're going to do is took off the air filter. And here we go. This is a air filter mount goes on the carburetor and it should have a little hose clamp around there mine was missing so. maybe that's part of the reason my carburetor was dirty <laughs> okay so next thing we're going to do is go ahead and take off this fuel line right here First thing we'll do is take off the fuel line. I wanted to wait till today to do this so that I started with a perfectly cold mill. Battery is disconnected. There's no heat, there's no flames, no sparks. So we can be as safe as we can. We don't have to worry about taking the fuel lines off. One of the things I should probably do is test the fuel pump today. I put the new fuel pump on, but it was quite some time ago. So next thing we're going to do is disconnect the choke cable. It comes right here. This is a tiny little nut on there that I have to look for the wrench. So just use the crescent. There we go. Okay. What's the choke cable taken off there? Throttle. Right here. Look at that. So you just... On mine anyways to get the throttle out you just pull that out drop that down so we got the fuel we got the throttle off we're basically there <laughs> that was cool these engines are really really cool and really easy to work on awesome so i am going to take off these two bolts down here and the carburetor to come off there's also this is like a basically an adapter i guess like a you have know, adapter flange put this carburetor on this intake so i'm going to take it off here because i kind of look and see if there's a gasket in there i noticed one of these bolts was a little loose you can also take the upper nut off too. so let's see what happens here for whatever reason i'm having a hard time finding my second set of metric wrenches so Just gonna put the crescent on the top and use the wrench on the bottom. Okay. <laughs> right. Not too bad. Got that one loosened up. Yeah. Hoping what we're gonna see is just a little bit of gunk in this carburetor and when I clean it out the mill is just gonna start absolutely perfectly um, I'm also gonna go through a couple other things I've never checked the timing on this mill since I've owned it I've never checked it it's always ran pretty well so I think I'll check the timing and I think I'll go ahead and adjust the valves as well I just I really want this motor to be running perfectly. I mean, that's any motor should just be running perfectly at all times. So it's been surprising that it's not, but okay. well, then we just got one more take off right here. Those are a little loose. It's really interesting. I've it's really interesting. I've never 
I don't think I've ever taken it off right here because I think the last time I took it off I would have taken these upper nuts off and left this flange on <laughs> So the engine was running lean. So that's actually really funny because, I mean, the engine running lean could be because it was leaking air right here. Like that could totally be what it is. So they're a little tight to get to, and they're not like bad. It's just, it's just a little tight. Let's see. I wonder if that's all that's wrong. Whatever, as long as we put this back on and it works good, I'll be happy. Okay, got that one coming off. It's like a stainless nut I just took off, so that's cool. Yeah, that is so funny. The carburetor just looks absolutely perfectly clean in there. So, I am really intrigued. If there's no gasket in here, that is gonna be really funny. And you know, I, I don't know. Let's find out. Looks like there is a gasket anyways. That's good. Those bolts were so loose though, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the problem. Okay. There is a gasket. It looks good. Um, here, they've got one more thing to take off. The carburetor will come off here so there's a little nut there I didn't notice that holds the uh, choke cable in place so, let's pop that one off and take this carburetor over to the bench clean it out so those gasket here looks great so we'll be able to reuse it and then hopefully just tightening that down all the way is going to fix us. I bet there's a little gunk in here. We've had some bad gas over the years and this thing has ran a lot of hours. I did rebuild this carburetor last time. I took it off. So I'm just hoping all the gaskets and stuff are still good. They should be. There we go. Oops. So yeah, I dumped a little gas there. <laughs> Probably it's just good to have everything off so you don't need to worry about it. So, All right. Let's get this thing set up and uh, take it apart. See how we're doing. Okay, so here's the mobile dimension carburetor. Mine, I know there's at least two carburetors they put on there. Mine says Solex Brosol. Solex Bro Sol. So that's what this carburetor is. And I remember reading in the uh, manual that there were other carburetors that went on the smell. So the first thing we're going to do, this is a top service carburetor, which I really like. I, I guess I kind of made that word up. Anyways, you service it from the top. So what we'll do is just take all these screws out of the top here. And we're going to pull the whole top off Let's see how we're looking here and you just want to get a good clean place to work on a carburetor and I just usually use a tote lid yeah, and those screws are a little bit loose too well, easy to take apart anyways so, take all the screws out of the top of this. They've got little lock washers on them. We will see what this carburetor looks like. It sure feels like a quality carburetor. I remember rebuilding it. I've had various issues with this mill over the years. I've been slightly concerned this is a spark issue, so. We will see. Either way, after 10 years, this guy did a clean this out if you're having a running issue, so. 
Yeah, this is the Solex carburetor. I can't remember the name of the other one that they said, but I remember at some point you could buy the different carburetor and put it on there. Okay, I got all the screws out. There we go. It's so sunny out here, I can't really see the screen, so I hope you can see all this. Okay. Yeah, it looks good, but I can see a little bit of kind of red dust in there, which is hopefully a sign. Okay, so since I want to try to use this, I need to be so careful to take this off. Yep, we got it. That's good. So we'll go ahead and flip that over. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's full of shit. Sorry. <laughs> That's a barrel burping. <laughs> That's uh, full of rusty water in the bottom of the bowl real bad. Which is uh, really a good sign because hopefully we'll be able to clean that out. So this should be a really easy job. So here we are. We're looking at the top of the carburetor. This thing's really a cool car. Bowl's right here. And this is where the gas and air mixture goes into the engine. So... It looks like on this one, the bowl just lifts right out. Yep, so cool. So just super carefully lift your bowl right out. Or your float. This is your float. And this is what goes up and down in the carburetor to turn the fuel on and off. Oh, this is a cool carb. So I don't really need to show you what's in there. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, I will show you. Oh my God. Wow. Oh, this is a really good sign. This is bad. So, uh, Hopefully, what that means is we found a problem. All right. Look at it in there. There is like... Oh. Sheesh. How, do, how is the mill even running? So what happened was a couple years ago, this is crazy, like two or three, maybe even four, four or five years ago, I bought a, uh, my dad put this huge fuel tank on the back of the barge and I needed to take the barge to Juno to do some work for one of my cabins. My dad said, all right, well, just bring me back this load of gas as payment. So we put this huge steel tank we got from somewhere on the back of the barge. I put like 400 gallons of gas in there and we brought it back. Well, the inside of that tank was all rusty and for the next year we just kept running this rust through everything. and. It was so weird. The rust was so fine that it would go through the filters. I couldn't believe it. I mean, this thing's got double filter, like a, a sponge and then a little filter. But anyways, this is great news. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to spray that out, clean that out. But before we do that, let's just go ahead and finish the disassembly. So and I'll kind of explain how this card works, what I know about it. So. This is the bowl. And when this sits on top of there, this is the gas coming in. So the gas comes in that spot right there. Oh, I see a tiny screen in there I need to pull out and clean right in the intake. Wow. So the gas goes in there and then it sprays into the bowl. When it fills up in the bowl, this float pushes up against this right there, and that's the valve that lets the fuel in or out. So when the mill's using fuel, the bowl will go down, it'll let fuel in, and then when the bowl comes up, it'll close it off. There's a tiny little screen right there, which looks surprisingly clean. And that's the crazy thing about that red dust, it just floated through everything. So. Let's go ahead, just set this aside. So this is really simple, okay? The fuel comes in, and it comes out right here. So that's one of the most important spots you want to clean, is through there. And I'm going to go ahead and get that little screen out of there. And that's basically it on the top of the carb. There's a big tube through here to clean out, so just spray everything out. But basically you need to clean this both ways. And then right here, 
is another, I guess we'll call it a, I'm not sure it's a jet, it's just another fuel port. Fuel goes in there and sprays out that little hole there. So we're going to spray through there, we're going to spray through there, and that's it for the top of the carburetor. The bottom of the carburetor, there's usually a couple jets you can take out. I see one right here. So this is just right in the middle of the top of the carburetor. I was taught to always take these out, but this one came out really easy. If they don't come out, like if it's like, oh man, it's seized in there, don't break it. Just spray through it because more often than not, if you just spray through it really carefully back and forth, you could clean it without taking it out. And if you break it, well, you're in trouble. Get a new carburetor. So let's pull that guy out. Yep. Well, that's a super good one to get out. Little holes to clean out. It looks it looks clean, but that's super critical. And then over here, I'm not sure if this is just a drain or what, but just right here, we'll take this out. See what that does. That must be a drain, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And then my memory is there's a slow speed. Yep. So I'm pretty sure this is the slow speed mixture screw, the idle mixture screw. So we're going to take that all the way out. And these are like your needle valves where you want to be so careful. Like don't let the tip of that touch anything. Like if you touched it or nicked it or bent it, you'd really be in trouble. So just don't touch it. Okay. So last thing to take off is this part right here four screws I think this is part of the throttle I'm not super familiar with this carburetor but I think what this is is like a plunger to give the mill gas when you accelerate so when you throttle it up it has got a screw that's like almost impossible to get to in there. That was funny. So let's just go ahead and take it off. It's got four screws and there's one in there. It's a little hard to get to. So I could probably disconnect that. Well, that's all it goes. Okay. So I'll just need to find a smaller slotted screwdriver to get in there real quick. Sheesh. Well, I am so excited. Uh, try this out because I just find it so satisfying when this mill is running perfectly and it has not been and I think we got it figured out. So I just got a smaller slotted screwdriver and I was able to get right in there on that screw. So let's pull this little thing out and we'll see if I can figure out what it is <laughs> without the manual. It's some part of the X. It might literally just be the X, like how the mill accelerates. Everything might be in here. So it's spring loaded, so we're gonna be really careful. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's just like what I said, and I'm glad we took it off. It's just a plunger. And I think what it does is when you accelerate the mill, the plunger will depress as you're accelerating to just give it a little bit more gas to help it accelerate. I'm pretty sure that's what that is, because that's what it that's what it is on my uh, boat. So there's a lot of gunk in here. I'm not sure if the fuel. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Wow. Well, we'll see. This this is really dirty in there. So that might. That might really change things. So what I'm going to do is let's grab another tote lid here. <coughs> so I think it would have been better while this was on the mill to clean the outside of it. I'm not gonna do that today, but I think that's what you'd wanna do. Like, 
You'd want to like clean the outside of the carburetor off before you take it off like this. And then what that will do is help you from like having so much dirt. You know what I mean? So in this case, we're just going to be super careful about cleaning it up. This carburetor, you know, it gets sprayed with sawdust all day, every day, and it gets blasted off with, like we clean it off with the air compressor almost every day. So I should have done that before I started this project, but it's okay. So now you want to get your carburetor cleaner. And you should probably always use gloves as well, but no matter what, you always want to use eye protection with this stuff. Um, no matter what you do, you're going to spray it in some tiny little hole and it's going to come shooting out some other hole and spray you right in the eyes. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. So put your goggles on, clean all your sawdust out of your poor goggles and let's clean this carb out and get it back on the mill. I am so excited. I'm definitely going to run the, turn the mill over a couple times. And just make sure the fuel pump is working and just make sure the fuel's coming out clean. Everything looks really, really clean. Like I just did the filters, you know, the tank, and it, it looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and start. I like to just start with the main input where the fuel comes in. Okay. So we can spray fuel through it and then we'll or spray cleaner through it, and then we'll also be able to check that the valve works. So let's try it. Oh. Before we do that, let's see if we can get this little screen out. That looks like a job for like a small screw. There we go. Oh, sheesh. Cool. So that is a tiny, tiny little, you know, one of those long little screens. You can see the end of it's all dirty. So let's see if we can clean that out real quick. Wow. So, I mean, that would do it right there. Just this screen. Wow. That's cleaning right out. Jeez. Yikes. So that was a ton. There was a lot more stuff inside this little thing than I expected. I still got more to go. I mean, it actually looks beautiful. It's really, really clean. So it's undamaged. So we are going to put this back in. Wow, look at that. Oh, man. that Just that. That little bit of fuel starvation. Probably most of my problems right there. So we're going to go ahead and set this aside on the clean table for a minute. And we're going to go back to the main jet now. Let's spray through the main jet. It is working. It seems good. It also seems like it could be slightly constricted, so what we've done now is we sprayed the carburetor cleaner back and through there and then we're going to hit that one again very carefully with the air compressor. Um, I have really good luck using the air compressor to clean carbs. I've heard that if you're not careful with new carbs you can actually damage them with the air compressor but okay so now we're going to hit that second small jet that I showed you. So right here is a hole and then it comes out this little tube in there. That looks good. And again, we're going to hit that with the air compressor too. And I'm just going to kind of spray everything. Set that part aside. That looks really good. And I tested the valve. As soon as I hold it up, it stops. So I'm going to wait to put this screen in until I hit it with the air compressor. Let's go back to the main carb here. First thing we're going to do is try to get this, all oh, this gunk out of the bowl here. Oh my God. Eesh. 
That is incredible. Oh, man. I sure hope this gets the mill just running like new here. Oh, that'll be great. Okay, so. I need to clean the very bottom of that bowl with something that'll actually wipe it out. So I'm just going to get like a nice uh, clean shop towel. We'll give it a little wipe in there. Clean shop towel is actually just basically an old shirt. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little crusty on the very bottom of that bowl. It kind of sucks. Okay. Well, I'm just going to let this stuff kind of sit in there a little bit. and We'll keep going and try to get that as clean as we can in there. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit all the fuel passages. So, this is pretty crazy to me, but it looks like... So the main spot the fuel goes out of the bowl is up those tubes. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and hit all these spots, every little hole here. Watch this. So that's backwards through that jet. That was really good. That was a really good sign. Going that way. Some of these might not. Like that one I think was just a not a through passage. That looks good. One thing I haven't really seen is this this little tube right here. Okay, so this little tube thing is screwed in. I'm going to try. No, no, no. I'm not going to take it out. I don't want to damage it. Let's see. There it is. Okay. So, what that is, is when you accelerate, that plunger that we talked about, the fuel accelerator plunger, it, when you decelerate, it pulls fuel into it, and then when you pump it up, it's actually just straight up, it just pushes gas through that hole and it just dumps it in the, car the carburetor right there. Gives you a little more acceleration. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's all it does. It was really, it was so gummed up in this thing. I think it's still kind of gummed up. I don't even guarantee that was working at all. Okay. I really wish I had more carburetor cleaner today. I actually don't even have the right stuff, but it's gonna work out. So before you run out of cleaner, you know, if you're at a store, you can get more, that's great. It might take more than one can. We wanna go ahead and hit these. Make sure we hit all the parts, all the jets. We got sprayed through everything. I think we're gonna be good. Um, we actually forgot the carburetor cleaner on my dad's four-wheeler in town. I bought a bottle yesterday, but I feel really good about this. So from here, I'm just gonna try to clean the bowl out one more time. And we're gonna go ahead and hit this whole thing with the compressed air now. And like I said, you know, I do a lot of carburetors a year, like five or six, and I haven't damaged one with the air, but maybe if you got some new carburetor, you wouldn't want to use the air, or maybe you just want to read about it anyways. I've, uh, I've had a lot better luck cleaning carburetors after I start using the compressed air. Um, flood it all with the 
carburetor cleaner to like soften all the gunk up and then hit it with the air. So let's go ahead and get that going and put this thing back together before I forget how to do it. All right, well, the battery's been out of the generator, so I had to charge it up for a while. It's running good, the pressure's going. We got the mill all fueled up and cleaned off, so let's get back to our project. So now we're just going to do the same exact thing that we did with the carburetor spray, but we're going to do it with compressed air. accelerator plunger so we'll go ahead and call that piece there here we go so I was able to drop that screw that was a little hard to get to right in there no problem without breaking it. You gotta kind of get a feel for how tight to put stuff. If you stripped any screws out on your carburetor, it's really a sad day, so. There if you broke any. We're gonna go pretty tight because this mill, it gets a lot of vibration. Okay. So, we're gonna go ahead we're going to install this jet now. We're going to blow it out with the air. Good. This was the center jet right here, I believe. Yep. And this one just gets tightened all the way down. I 
am so excited to hear the mill run. I really think it's gonna purr. So inside, let's just go ahead and finish it. I'm gonna give this one last hit of compressed air. Love it. We're gonna put the fuel bowl in. Same thing, right before we go in, put it in. Get all that sawdust up. And just carefully get this thing closed up before you have any issues. It's a really cool carburetor. B-R-O-S-O-L. And then it says Solex, which is the name I remember. The float goes in there, goes up and down. Looks great. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and put the cap on. This only goes on there one way, which is nice. You can see that there's a hole right here for the float to come up and push against our main valve right there. So let's drop this baby on there. Oh yeah. Okay. If you took that off and it looked absolutely clean in there, it's still, you might not be able to see it was plugged up, but the fact that it's just full of rust for that bad gas, that is a sure sign. I should have done this a long time ago, I guess, but last year the mill ran okay, I remember. So maybe we're right on time. So I'll probably order another rebuild kit because this seems like a really good carburetor that's going to last forever. And next time I do that, I'd like to be able to put new gaskets in again. So I'll go ahead and do that. Get these all nice and tight. You want to be really careful to check for gas leaks after this. Because that's your scariest thing about the mill. It's burning it down, so you really want to. You got to just be so careful, and anytime you're working on the carburetor, well, double check. Okay, the last couple parts is the needle valve for the low speed mixer, idle mixer screw. Pretty sure. Now, this is when you want to be really careful. You don't want to touch that tip on anything, just get it right in there. I mean, nothing, don't let it touch anything. So, that's the screw that you adjust to set the idle air mixture, fuel the air mixture. I might have the manual for this carburetor now that I think about it, I probably do, but we'll just go ahead and what we'll do is tighten all the way in loosely. You never want to slam on tight, just real loose. Okay, right there. We're going to go ahead and back it out one and a half turns. We'll just see what that does. I think that'll get us going. The last part is this valve we pulled out of the side right here. I don't know what this is. It's just, I don't know. I think it's called some kind of jet. We got that real clean. That one is going to go in all the way, I believe. Yeah. Let's tighten that up. Awesome, okay. Well, let's go slap this on the mill and see how she starts up. Thanks for coming along with me today. I'll do uh, old dimension how-to videos anytime something on this mill is broken. So I've probably gone through about a third, maybe less than a third, but a decent amount, 25% of the stuff that goes wrong. So every time this stuff happens, I'll do a real-time how-to video in real life and then we'll get the mill going and we'll cut with it make sure that what i'm doing is working in the real world and then 
probably in about another six months there'll be a collection of videos that's complete. It's got every single thing that ever would happen with this mill. We're gonna go through it all right here on Second Row Homes. So please remember that if you'd like to see more videos about this kind of stuff, saw milling or how to use this mill, or if you've got a mill you'd like to use it, or if you just like coming with me in the woods, click on the like and the subscribe button below this video so that you'll be able to come with us on our next adventure. You can also come back to the Second Growth Homes channel on YouTube and there's a little search button. You can search for whatever you're looking for. If you want to go logging with us or come here to the mill with us uh, or come sailing with us, camping, we do a lot of different things. So that's a great way to connect. Let's go ahead and put this Solex carburetor back on the Mobile Dimension Mill Model 127 and see how she starts up today. Okay, so I'm standing at the driver's end of the mill. And you're standing at the other end of the mill, so you should be able to see the orientation here. Put my gasket on there. Like I said, next time I do this, I'm going all new gaskets. Drop the carb on there. Oh yeah. Okay, then there's two stainless nuts to put on there. Where did I put them? Uh oh. I see right where I had them. Huh. Sheesh. I had uh, at some point I'd knock the wrench and those bolts, those two nuts off where they were, but I found them, so we're good. Okay. So, no, this one's a little hard to film. These nuts are just a little bit hard to get on here, so we're putting on, gosh, that is a tight spot in there. We're putting the nuts back on right here that hold the carburetor down, so. go all right carburetor is in place let's go ahead and tighten those up oh well that's good news we are there for a minute so right now you're tightening up. These bolts right here that hold the carburetor down. I am missing a couple wrenches today, so we are using the crescent as a holding wrench. So we'll just get those two tightened up and then connect everything back on the carburetor. All right, we got the carburetor in place here and the bolts are tightened so it's fully mounted to the mill. The throttle on mine, this is the throttle rod and all it does is just comes in and pushes through there. Mine doesn't have a keeper or anything. This, that's it. Well, there's the throttle hooked up. You can see the governor moving. Okay, and there's the low speed mixture screw that we'll mess with after we get this started. So now we need to find the choke cable. It is. And the choke cable comes up and it hooks on right there. And then it, it's gonna clamp in here. The way I'm going to align mine is just I want to make absolutely certain that the choke is open all the way when it's running. 
and I'll go from there. So that, right there. Ah, oh, so hard to see this stuff. <laughs> this is a hard video for you to make, man. Okay, right there, that's the clamp for the choke. So we're just gonna get it kind of, there we go, close to tight. So right now I've got the choke knob all the way in. Yep, chokes up. So we are gonna go ahead Call it good, right, right there. So if I pulled it anymore, it would start to move. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten up these two now. A little metric socket on there would be nice. Okay, got a nice little Five sixteenths inch wrench. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So we got the throttle connected. We got the choke connected. And we got the carburetor mounted to the mill. So, next two things are the air cleaner and the gas. So what we're going to do is real careful, I am going to spray a little bit of gas out of this hose super carefully here because I really just, I just need to see that fuel pump let out a spray of clean fuel. I just cleaned the, like the fuel tank and the filter and everything. so. Anytime you're doing a carb job, you want to go all the way. You want to clean that whole fuel line, blow your fuel lines out, you know. Because if you don't, well, you might get your old carburetor done and then have a little bit of gunk go through and plug it right back up again. So. I am so excited! Hear this mill run again like it's supposed to. That was a lot of stuff we cleaned out there. So, this is like a don't try this at home kind of deal. I don't think I'm gonna have any spark. I'm out here in the wild. Let's just see. Okay. I didn't see any fuel. My battery was a little bit low. So let's hook up the charger and we'll see what's going on. Really interesting because I was thinking about it. It seems like there is a good chance that my fuel pump might be messed up even though I put it on there new. So let's just try it one more time. Oh. Well there we're seeing the fuel. Let's try it one more time. Okay. So that looks great. Um, fuel poof poof poof. We're good. Let's go ahead and put our fuel line back on. I'm gonna let this gas all evaporate for like a while before I start the mill. Oops. You really, see, you really, you really want to do this stuff when the mill is cold. So here's the fuel line there. I just need to tighten that up. I didn't show this, but the air filter has a little hose, breather hose right there. The crankcase. So I'm going to tighten my fuel line. We'll let this gas evaporate for a minute. We're going to start the mill. I'm so excited. I'm like, I'm like really, really excited right now. I've been, you know, I love this machine so much. It's a huge part of my operation. It's also just a huge, kind of a huge part of who I am is this sawmill. I know, it's really a kind of important item, you know, you build cabins and houses and this is what does it, is this mill, so. You can see some wiring work I wanna do. I come back from Judo, I'm gonna bring a new battery and some new terminals and stuff and I'm gonna replace some wires. 
to make it a little safer. So, well, there we go. That's the Solex carburetor completely replaced on the Mobile Dimension sawmill. Uh, give me just a minute here. And we're gonna go ahead and start this baby out and see how she runs. If you watched my other videos this week, you've been seeing some of the running problems I've been having. So um, you can go back, I'll put a link below. You can click on one of those videos and kind of hear the mill before we did this carb job. And then now we'll be able to hear it after we did the carb job. So let's see what happens here. Okay, we got our fire extinguisher here. We're gonna start it up. We're gonna be really careful to immediately start looking for fuel leaks or anything out of place. The carburetor is dry, but no gas, so it should take a little while. afternoon well today here at second growth homes we're planing wood on our woodmaster planer molder so we got this big beautiful pile of three by six it's kind of loud so i figured i'd start farther away so we got this big pile of three by six here and we're gonna go ahead and run them all through the planer and we're gonna turn those into finished smooth three by six and we're going to use them to build an a-frame cabin uh in a remote location next week so if you'd like to come with us see us uh building with this same timber next week 
Uh, please remember to click on the like and subscribe buttons below. Well, let's go ahead and get started.